Where's my logger's tape when I need it? Yeah, here we go. All right, there we go. Eight foot. Eight foot and one inch, actually. So a total of 16 feet without stopping. Red oak and... Uh, Hope you saw the chips we were throwing. I was putting my hand up there catching them. Uh, let me pick up a few. Of course, there is some dust here. We're we're milling, no doubt. Let's pick up a a good random handful here. So there we go, and you can see the finish. It's, it's not super slick, but I'm not getting any splinters. We see some ridge in here. No big deal. And I'm going to saw this into two inch. Uh, the saw is holding 10,000 in the wood in the cut. That's a 20 inch bar, full comp. Uh, 10 degree top plate. Let's get over the top of this chain, look at it. I think the light is good. We ought to be able to see that. Okay. 10 degree top plate. Let's look at the rest of what we've done today. Oh yeah, another thing. Uh, talking to Doug about wedges. Uh, this is a standard uh, 10 inch wedge and I cut it in half with a hacksaw and then clamp it back together. It'll bow when you cut it in half. It'll bow, clamp it back together and put it in the windshield of a car. And that's a rough neck. Uh, the same people that make the Husqvarna wedges. I got a video I need to upload about that. So roughneck wedges made in the USA. Killinger, USA. Eitzenkopf, I think that's Germany. It's going down here. So we saw that beam today. We saw this beam today. Up, uh, oh, steel, imagine that. Here's a top. Here's some of the offcuts we did. And all this was done with the same chain. Here's another one. And it's gun barrel straight, ladies and gentlemen. Let me get this giant crowbar out of the way. If that looks big, it's because it is. That is a huge crowbar. Check out that straightness. That's a $30 uh, mini mill. That's what I refer to it as. It's an edger. It's a knockoff. Look at that. That ain't bad for rural work. Uh, that's eight inches wide. Here's another one. Same thing. Notice the straightness. Straight as a gun barrel. And I'm going to mill all this into two inch thickness with a Alaskan. Uh, I've got my square, my framing square right here. Let me show you this. I showed Doug some of this earlier. Not bad. Not bad for a chainsaw, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Let's lay it right over this. Not perfectly square, but almost, almost with a chainsaw. It's a little out. It's a little out. Close enough for real work. Uh, let's go down the other end look in the other direction. Well, show you that beam there. Um, this is not luck. This is repeatable. And if you look back through the playlist, look at the playlist for Mini Meal, and you'll see that this is not the first time. And all of this was done with that chain you saw, that wore out junkie tiny cutter chain on a Chinese aftermarket chainsaw built three years ago. There's also a shout out to the Logrite company. That's an indispensable tool right there with a timber jack. All right, I think that's everything. Uh, uh, that 16 foot cut we just did right there. Uh, I would sharpen it. I'd say that the chain is still sharp enough to cut you. It's still sharp enough to grab you. It's not briar sharp, but it's 
it's still sharp enough to cut you. So over 16 feet with one run. I have done a 26 footer before, so as to our dimensions, uh, we're about six and three eighths. Ah. And let's put our square on here. And on bigger pieces, obviously this is not the proper way to use a square, but it, it shows you what you've got. Not bad, not bad. That close enough for rural work was originated by Dick Pranke. I borrowed that from him. Those of you that know Dick Pranke know what I'm talking about. Let's look at it from the other end. All right, that ain't bad. So uh, these bark inclusions you see here, that's the run out for the bark. And obviously when we mill that off, you can turn that to the inside or use it for side and whatever you want to do. But uh, thank everybody for watching and uh, whatsoever your hands find to do, do it with all your might.